Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Market Mastery. You're with your host, Trader Dax. Uh, at the moment, we're here looking at BTC. We do have FOMC tonight, so there's a lot of interesting uh, factors at play right now in the crypto markets, in the stock market as well. We're going to have a quick look at FOMC, give you everything you need to know, because it is an important one tonight, being the quarterly dot plot release as well, and everything going on with the banking sector and everything like that collapsing at the moment, and why that actually could be bullish for risk assets, at least in the short term, until everything, you know sort of S is the bed. Okay, let's get stuck into it. We're going to look at Bitcoin here first, which to me, that just looks like standard Bitcoin uh, bullish price action here at the moment in an ascending triangle. Now, I'm not sure if this is going to, you know, fake out here one more time and then come back uh, to retest this trend line. Uh, typically, these do like to test uh, five times. So one, two, three, four, five, and then they break out. Uh, but a lot of the time when it's really bullish, the the fifth touch doesn't make it all the way back down to the trend line and just sort of like rests in the middle of the channel, which is sort of like through here, right? So this already could have touched the tr the tr support trend uh, multiple enough times for it to end up breaking out. And this is just based off, you know, standard Bitcoin price action that I've uh, seen in a bullish market for the last five years trading this thing full time, right? And similar sort of price action, we saw a lot of this ended up just breaking out to the upside uh, in the last bullish, uh, bull run, I should say, out of uh, not really the technically the bull run, but the reaccumulation pump out of the accumulation rally. Um, and we have also just uh, broken out of the DR uh, as well on the lower time frame. So this is considered a DR failure setup, uh, which is only happens 15% of the time in the Asian session. So uh, that means there's probably a little bit of strength behind it and we could continue to push the upside. The last time that happened, we absolutely launched. So possibly we could be getting to rally here into the London session. Uh, if not, I'm going to be looking for breakout trades above this uh, above this level uh, in the London session. Where does this white line level come from? It is the daily low from uh, the preliminary support area of our previous trading range before we rolled over into the selling climax. Okay, so really important level through here for that to get reclaimed. Uh, and if we can you know, get a really bullish structure through here and push again, uh, I think the next key level is going to be up here at about 37.6K, okay? That might take a while to fill in, but I think ultimately that's where uh, it wants to go. So, you know, it might pump up, have a bit of a pullback, something like this, you know? Uh, anything, any, you know, it can do whatever it wants. It doesn't have to follow my line, but um, uh, it can create any shape on the way back. But we're basically what we're doing was comparing it to the price action here out of this accumulation range back in 2019, right? So similar sort of price action. We could be around this, well, maybe basically we're around this level here where we broke out uh, from this 6K. So in my opinion, we're sort of around this area here at the moment, breaking out of here. So potentially we're gonna break, have a really strong push into that sort of 30K range uh, and then get a break uh, pull back to retest the top of that 30k potentially uh, and then push higher okay uh, and then this would be equal to being about 48k okay so potentially this run is going to push all the way up to this level up here right uh, that's the most obvious target and if crypto or BTC is going to continue to rhyme with the 2019 reaccumulation rally, it would make sense to come up here and test the 0 0.618 and the key uh, swing point in here on the weekly level, okay? That makes the most sense to me for our major target, but that's a long way off still before we get there. So let's focus a little bit more on the lower time frames and uh, FOMC that's coming up tonight, right? So... In my opinion, because the banking sector is failing, there's no way they're going to do 50 basis point hike. Uh, I think most likely it's probably going to be a pause, but they could still do a 25% as they love to follow their schedule. If we do get a pause, I think you know Bitcoin will break up out of here, uh, this 28.5, and start to push towards 32. And you know the Nasdaq is looking really bullish as well. So this is just the standard broadening descending wedge. And it looks like it's actually going to end up playing out 
Uh, really key level through here as well. Multiple touches on this thing. So a breakout above here is going to give us a nice push on all the tech stocks up to about 13,700, uh, right? So that's a nice little run that could get filled in quite quickly. Uh, potential 7% push to the upside through there on a dovish fed tonight, okay? Uh, I think it's also less important about, you know, do they do zero or do they do 25 tonight? Uh, I think it's actually more about uh, what happens with the dot plot, okay? And, you know, what does Jerome Powell say in his meeting? So let's have a quick look at the dot plot here now. This was the dot plot in December uh, 14, and all of these dots actually got moved up. A lot of them were below five, okay? Uh, might zoom in just a little bit there. Right, a lot of these dots were all below the, the five level, and they from September, and they all got moved up. Apart from two of the committee members, uh, didn't didn't expect uh, two thousand and twenty three, the end of twenty twenty three. Uh, so the December meeting that where rates would be, and they only only two of them were saying below five. Right, everyone else was saying they need to be above five. So if these all shift down to like under four point five or under four, for example a big shift in where these dots are because of everything that's going on with the financial crisis at the moment, with the banking sector, that is going to be very bullish in my opinion, because there weren't really any, um, any rate cuts scheduled in until 2024. So if they start foreshadowing with the dot plot, they're going to start cutting in 2023. I think that's going to be really bullish for risk assets and we're going to pump, right? You've got to remember as well that everybody's super bearish at the moment because yeah, look, you know, banks are failing. Why wouldn't you be bearish, okay? But the Federal Reserve also just injected, uh, they just injected uh, an extra $300 billion dollars of capital into the markets, right? So that's going to be a really interesting one to see how that plays out. I think this is the chart here, right? So you can go to um, Fred, the uh, Federal Reserve Economic Data website of St. Louis, right? So it's you can just type this in anyway uh, and it will come up. But basically this is total assets, uh, less eliminations from consolidation uh, and it's released on Wednesdays, okay? Anyway, let's go and have a look back here and basically what happened is they've been this is when QT started uh in April basically they started pulling capital out of the global economy and this is the first time since uh mid last year that they've actually put anything back in and it was a really strong injection you can see here that this was uh 8 mil sorry 8 trillion 340 billion up to 8.6 trillion okay so an extra 300 billion of capital injected into the economy that's going to be bullish for risk assets and now it's pretty much the signal for wall street to load up and you can see ever since that came out which was last monday or last sunday night right we can see that the reversal got put in here and uh, i think in my opinion smart money started buying while uh, all the all the dumb money and retail was shorting like crazy all through here because let's be honest like this was it was looking pretty bad on all markets crypto was you know just starting to bleed out really aggressively spx was as well things didn't look very good and then stuff started breaking in my opinion it was deliberately broken by the bigger players in the industry because they probably have exposure so they wanted to take down a few easy targets cause the banking crisis cause the federal reserve to have to pause and uh basically reset you know the the factors at the moment and the way that federal reserve is playing it and switch from QT to force QE, okay? Uh, and, you know, force the market to push up. So it would make sense to me if, you know, we do get a bit more of a dovish Fed tonight. Maybe they do 25 and all the dot pot, all the dot plots come down uh, and we see those dots come down and then he's very dovish and talks about, okay, you know, we're getting to the end of it now. We're starting to see blah, blah, blah happening in the economy and the financial system. That's the most important thing, financial stability. Uh, you know, we're going to see how much blowback uh, the cuts that we've currently put in ends up having the cause that, that and the effect that that ends up doing um, coming into play over the next couple of months. And then we can review again, something like that. I think the market will pump really aggressively and it won't sell off and have a big rollover in my opinion until we start to see 
unemployment uh, start to rise and we start to see earnings start to really take some big hits, okay? Which might not happen, okay? So we don't want to be acting overly bearish and expecting massive sell-offs until unemployment starts to rise uh, and earnings start to take a big hit, okay? So until then, uh, with QE happening and capital getting injected into the, into the economy, I am looking for more upside, okay? Uh, but ES, right? Really nice breakout. So you can see all the defending of the long-term trend line here for the broadening descending wedge, right? Uh, a lot of selling, a lot of short sellers trapped underneath here. And uh, it looks like we're going to see, uh, we have had the breakout of this falling wedge through here as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how London plays this and how New York plays it because both were very strong yesterday, uh, how that ends up playing out leading into FOMC tonight. But if we do get a dovish Fed, this is going to end up heading up to the target of this falling wedge. Uh, which is up here at uh, 4,000, pretty much 200, okay? And that's going to be really bullish for all cryptos because, you know, that wave of liquidity coming into the market and pushing everything higher is going to help all markets rise, okay? Uh, so let's have a look at a few things in the crypto space. Litecoin needs to take $90 to get bullish. Again, I have taken a position uh, down here and in here, and I'm looking for that to continue to run to the upside and play some sort of a... Um, symmetrical triangle type, uh, ascending triangle type setup, okay? So potentially uh, see something like this play out and then we get the breakout of this key level, which is also the head and shoulders, right? Reclaim, so that would be quite bullish. I think Litecoin has potential to run for the next few months because it does have its halving coming up in August. So this is sort of the window through here that I think it has to aggressively push to the upside, okay? Um, Magic is an interesting one because it's one of the ones that's outperforming. No real setups here at the moment. Uh, currently long, but I don't want to see it come back below this level. I want to see this grind up and then push to new highs. Uh, so basically what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the coins that outperformed last time quite well. Alluvium was one that did really, really well. So I'm looking for this. Had a bit of a fake out here, a bit of a bump and run, uh, faked out, couldn't really hold above this level, which is a bit disappointing. I do want to see this uh, get another breakout. Just going to bleep this fib. Get another breakout of this downtrend through here and reclaim uh, this really big support and a resistance level, right? So get back above 72, 73. I think that looks really strong again. If I wasn't in it right now, I'd be looking for an uh, entry on the reclaim of this 72 level. Uh, and then I'd be looking for that to run back up to the highs. Okay. Okay. So uh, other important things we're looking at total at the moment. So big neckline of the inverse head and shoulders through here. I think this is eventually going to follow BTC and it should get a push at least up to 700 bill. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is going to basically uh, be mainly caused by Ethereum, which is looking really bullish at the moment. Okay, let's have a quick look here on the hourly time frame. So we had this huge sort of rounding top type pattern, uh, which looked to me like distribution, to be honest, uh, and potentially maybe it was just redistribution. But in my opinion, you know, this was actually getting ready to break down and possibly come back to you know make equal lows or, or new lows down there. Uh, but then obviously the banking crisis kicked in down here and saved the day because all that extra liquidity pumping into the market and basically everyone just went, okay, it's time to go risk on now. Uh, so yeah, basically we've done a retest of the breakout of that, of the highs back here, right? Let's go to a bit higher time frame. It's a bit easier to see, right? So broke out. Uh, and then there's just a really nice uh, falling wedge into, you know, a quite a strong pump through here. So basically the next leg is going to come on altcoins once Ethereum gets a breakout here, which to be honest, this looks like a little bull flag after a breakout of a falling wedge. Uh, can't get much more bullish than that. We also had a bearish divergence through here as well. Okay. Uh, stochastic getting ready for that swing high to kick in. Uh, so hopefully this just ends up playing as a bull flag and then, the algo got an entry through here and it took profit on the pullback through here overnight. So it was a nice one point, uh, I think it was 1.64R uh, for the yesterday's trade. And we're looking for it to get a breakout here and push up uh, to pretty much 2000, I think is the key level to watch for here. Let's go to high time frames quickly just to have a look. But yeah, basically, you know, there's not really much in here. So I think the next move higher is going to happen quite fast. Uh, and that'll coincide with the total two breakout as well, which should take us up to here. 
Uh, so that sort of makes sense. That should be a really nice push for about a 12 to uh, 10% gain on the trade. Okay, thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. We'll see you all in the next episode.